and you move on, right? So for me, you know, I don't, I don't relive it at all. I mean, it was a great experience. I mean, we had great people we work with there. We had great players we work with there. And for me, it was, it was a great experience, and I enjoyed my moments there. You know, I grew up there basically from college to, you know, being a young adult. So for me, it was home, and, you know, I have no uh, sore spots there at all. Wow, that's <laughs> – I'm assuming I would have won some games, you know, because <laughs> defensively it was right. You know, it was right. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's been stated, you know, numerous times. But, again, that wasn't the case. You know, it happened – you know, it was, it was a fast two years in Denver. And, you know, I can't say it wasn't warranted. I mean, we, you know, we didn't win. You know, it, they wanted to change, and I was the guy to change. You know, so that's, that's part of being a head coach. Guys love you. They love playing your defense. The results haven't always been there. Sure. So you, have you, is this a good home for you? Absolutely. I love it here. You know, the players, obviously, I've been here four years with the players. And when you draft these young guys and watch them grow and get better and better and, you know, become pro bowlers and have great careers and make money, I mean, it's fun, you know, for a coach. So for me, it's, it's, it's my new home, you know. So it's, it's uh, a place my family loves to live, obviously. That's first off. And, the football part has been right for me, you know. The goal is to win championships, and that hadn't happened, but, you know, hopefully that happens in the near future. But it's been a great spot for my family and myself. <clears throat> JJ's impact on those kids have been huge, you know. Um, the stuff you guys don't see, you know, in the meeting rooms, you know, outside of practice, I mean, he spends time with those guys. I mean, he's open and willing to spend time with young guys, you know, and whoever it is, you know, he's – He's never saying no to those guys. He has so much to give and so much to share, you know, from his experience of as a rookie not being great early on. I was there with him, you know, his first month and a half of being a pro. It wasn't good, you know, but he worked his way into being J.J. Watt. You know, he wasn't always J.J. Watt. I mean, he was a guy getting knocked on the ground. He was always on the ground. He was playing too fast sometimes, but he became a great player about that about week 18 in the playoffs against the Bengals. I mean, his, his rookie year, he made some plays in that game that – I've never seen made by a D lineman, and from there he became J.J. Watt. But his first year was a struggle. I mean, he was barely a starter in uh, Houston with us. So it's a great story about, you know, working your way up, and it's, you don't have to be a finished product as a rookie first-round pick, right? You know, if, if you give guys time and you coach them up, you know, they can be a Watt, you know, in you know, four or five years. So, but he has, he has been a great example for our guys on defense, everyone. Have you seen those guys kind of start playing like him, looking like him? Well, I mean, that's a natural comparison with, 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 with Zach, the body types, and even with Cam winning this number in college. I mean, it was, it's obvious that he was a hero of Cam's. And Cam's first day on the job, it was funny to watch him, you know, just walk around JJ and just stare at him. You know, he wouldn't say anything to him, but he would just stare at him. You know, it was funny to watch that. But now Cam's got those traits, you know, and he's a young guy. He's eager to learn. Obviously, Zach's having a hell of a year. You know, he's, he's, he's out for a week or two maybe, but he's having a hell of a year. But, uh, yeah, Jay's impact is, is, is critical on those young guys. Speaking of Cam, he, he seems to have flashed a few times yeah. of late especially. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about his progress and <clears throat> is he where you want him to be at this point in the year? Absolutely. I mean, I mean Cam with more turns, you know, will get more sacks. You know, it's just – Playing with a lead, you know, and having more chances to rush freely, you know, that's that's been our problem. Uh, but Cam's a guy who can win one-on-one -on -one rushes. And, I mean, he's he's played an awful lot in the last month. And he's won a lot, you know, but uh, he needs more turns, you know, with a uh, fair game and a lead. You talk a lot about it. How difficult, sorry? how difficult has it been for you with just guys dropping all season long and yeah. having the next guy yeah. out? How tough is it to continue to scheme and, yeah. and try and defeat an opponent? That's part of it, you know. You know, every team has injuries in this league, and you know it, it's 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 late in the season, you know. So you have guys that you've trained, you know, who are backups who you trust, and that's what it comes down to: having guys that you can trust who who's going to do it right. You know, you can you can take care of guys who know what they're doing. You know, if you have a guy who's not a, you know, who who's 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 been with you for a day or two, it's hard to protect those guys. You know, but a guy who's been with me for two years, I can take care of the guy as far as what his best skills are. You know, so it, it's it's part of the game. You know, you can't complain about that because everyone has injuries. But we have guys who are grinding and studying to be the best they can be for me. And it's, it, it's been fun to watch young guys play and uh, make some plays for us. You mentioned big plays are always, can obviously always be game changers. Yeah. You see Monday night, a lot, of, a lot of good on defense. And then you get yeah. the, the two big ones to the tight end. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, the one before half was 
a miscommunication with, with the Russian dropper in the one in the fourth quarter was just a coverage that we blew. But, you know, obviously those things happen in games. And when you're not winning, every play becomes so critical. And it's tough as a coach to, to obviously not point those things out because those things happen to every team. You know, but when you're not winning games, you know, every play becomes so critical. And I've been there before as a coach. You know, you are um, you're just, just pushing your guys to be perfect. And it's not a perfect game. You know, it's going to be plays in a game where, you know, it's, it's, it's going to go against you. That's NFL football, but when you're not winning, every play becomes so critical, you know, and you're pushing and you're pushing and you're trying to make plays, and sometimes it works against you, you know, trying to push and be perfect. But those things happen, and uh, you don't want them to happen, but the guys are playing hard for us, and hopefully this week that won't change. Kirk, Kirk was playing with a, a back issue before he landed, you know, on whatever it is he's dealing with. Yeah. But I don't know if that hurt it worse, or but he, he was trying to gut through it. Can you yeah. talk about how? This season is kind of just yeah. I'm not silent. sure if it was injured before. I, I can't speak to that, obviously. But uh, Murph, you know, Murph's the guy who was playing well for us early. You know, obviously the injury with a back, with a defensive back, that's 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 tough. The movement part and just the flexibility in, in bending and, and sprinting and bursting, that's a problem for a corner. But um, you know, obviously he's young. He'll he's going to be fine moving forward. I mean, he's going to be a great player for the corners for a long time. As you go to Denver, what is it that you have to try and slow down or stop against the Broncos? The Broncos had their best output last week, you know, so that was obviously, you know, timing not good for us. But, uh, you know, Russell played well. I think Judy had three touchdowns, you know. So that that offense, you know, um, in spite of what you see on ESPN each week, it, it, it's it's right, you know. I mean, the first, second down stuff's right. The third downs in red zone have been some struggles, but it's organized and guys are playing hard. And Russell's Russell. He's making plays. Uh, you know, Jerry, uh, Judy is a guy who's a top 15 pick who's a playmaker. And Cortland Sutton, I drafted there as a second round pick. I mean, he's a big guy who's been in Pro Bowls. You know, so it's not going to be easy. It's it's an NFL offense that has good players and a good scheme. So if we don't play well, it, it, it can get bad for us. You know, that's just, that's every Sunday. But um, it's a it's a good offense that had their best output again on Sunday. So they're confident. I am not sure. You know, we have a plan for both guys. If Russell shows up, we'll play Russell. If not, we'll play the other guy. You make the things that happen in games. Have you ever been part of the team where you had three three potential takeaways in two weeks that were all over? I there? have not. I have not. I mean, it's been it's been rough. I mean, poor Zayvon Collins and you know Watt. I mean, it's, that's three touchdowns that's been called back in the last month. But I haven't seen that happen in a NFL season. But it's our turn, I guess, right? I have no reaction. You know, it's been a statement out by our team, and that's you know that's that's, that's everybody's reaction to it. Obviously, Steve's a friend of mine, and, and I feel for Steve, and I wish him luck. Uh, speaking of Colorado, what do you think of yeah. hiring? Yeah. I love the hire. I really do. You know, that program's been, you know, kind of not not relevant in, in about ten years. You know, so high and prime to me was a great hire. He's coached football, so it's not a not a strange hire. I mean, he's he's coached football and he's won games. So his his personality, his his namesake, being a Hall of Famer, that's going to draw guys in. You know, that's going to keep recruits home, and that's going to pull guys from Florida and Louisiana, from California. You know, that's a beautiful place to go to school. You know, so once guys get there, they'll enjoy playing there. But uh, in my opinion, that's a great hire. I'm, I'm excited about it. His personality a little different than yours. A little bit. <laughs> you know, he's he's one of one. You know, so I mean, you can't compare anyone to Prime, but. That's not my way of doing things, but I love watching him. I do. How much more creative do you have to get with the game plan moving forward without having Zach Allen in the fold? <sighs> well, you know, he's, he's a defensive lineman, you know, so as far as the pass rush stuff, you can get creative, but as far as the first thing down stuff, it's just a man, you know, playing his gap and, uh, you know, playing block. So that won't be a big deal, but third downs, obviously, Zach's had a great impact on our pass rush. So that's going to be the area where we're going to miss Zach the most, and that's the area where Got to plan a little bit more to, to get more pass rush from other guys. How much do you think you've missed Richard? It seemed like he was starting to play some pretty good football. Yeah. Now it's been a while, obviously. He's a really good player, you know, and as a, as a nose in this league, I mean, he controls the A gaps for us, you know. Not a pass rusher, but a run stopper. I mean, he's, he's damn good. And um, hopefully he's back in the near future and we'll move forward with this guy being a good player for us.